Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, so this is going to be a rant video, and um, ironically, I thought that I was going to send uh, a rant video to this person, um, and then I realized that it wasn't technically the person's question, so they would be like, why are you sending this to me? Um, but inevitably it does become the question and i'll get into it if you don't if you're new to my rant videos uh, my rant videos are very long they're just me uh expressing a large quantity of thoughts about a subject that i get a lot of questions about and whenever uh, i get enough questions about the same thing um, i tend to make a rant video so that i could just send it to people uh in the future if they ever decide to make this comment um, because I have already addressed it numerous times, um, and and that that is this is the, the, that's what this is. Um, so I just posted my twenty seven point zero rush route tier list, and inevitably I get the question: What are the best cards with no talents? I have most cards, but I'm a free to play player, so they're not high level, hence not having any talents, right? And I get this question in a various number of different kinds of ways. Um, I have. Bard, and Genie, and Treon, and Blade Dancer, and this, and this, and this. Uh, what's the best card? And so then I would be like, oh, well, you know, this is my tier list. That's, those are the best cards. Oh, well, my, my Genie is only level 7, but my Blade Dancer is level 13. Do you think that level 7, uh, Genie is better than Blade Dancer at level 13? And then I'd be, have to be like, no, like, Blade Dancer is probably a, probably better. Oh, but your your tier list said that Genie is the best. Like, should I use Genie? Should I invest into Genie? Uh, um, well, they're, they're probably going to nerf Genie next patch because it is this good. Oh, so then should I invest uh, everything into Blade Dancer and just forget about Genie? And I, th I, I have had this conversation in so many different kinds of comment threads. What are the best cards with no talents? What are the best cards uh, with uh, with the, when they're level ten? What are the best cards when they're a level eleven? What are the best cards when they're level twelve? What are the best cards when they're level thirteen? What are the best cards when they when I have a level nine this and a level ten this and a level eleven this and a level seven this and a level twelve this and a level fourteen this and I have two thousand crit and I have these heroes um, but I don't have a mermaid um, but I don't have uh, but I but I have like a level twenty captain but I don't have a uh, trickster but i but i do have a level 10 gadget do you think gadget is better than trickster and eventually inevitably this question it all boils down to one thing and that one thing is build me a deck I inevitably that's what it is that's that is what the question is um i went into this like thing with this person and i said what do you mean when you say best right what is, what, is, what does best mean what does best even mean oh what are the best cards at le level nine with no talents and I, and they said, like, what are S tier cards? Level seven, no talents. And so I said, Dryad and Scrapper. I'm pretty sure that's not what their question was. I'm pretty sure they were asking, like, what are the best DPS cards? But they also didn't specify that. Um, and, and even if they did, right? And I said, oh, Genie and Treon and Bard and, you know, all the event units. Um, they would say like, oh, well, you know, like you put Genie and Bard at the top. So should I invest in Genie and Bard? And this all boils down to the idea that a lot of people don't understand how to use a tier list. Like what does a tier list mean? A tier list is the cards at max level right now, as in as soon as 28.0 happens, because this is 27.0, as soon as 28.0 happens, maybe even as soon as whenever 27.1 happens, when they do like a mid patch, um, everything can change. And I don't think a lot of people understand that idea. They don't understand the idea that they have a level seven genie. And in my tier list, I put genie at, you know, like the top, right? Uh, I put genie at the top. Right at the top of the DPS cards. Um, I do agree that, like, you know, Night Statue and Scrapper, like, I will always put support cards ahead of DPS cards because those are the cards that you should invest in. Um, because you only need one DPS card, but you need four different support cards. And depending on your deck, you need four different support cards for different decks. Um, 
the the support cards that you would need for a cultist deck are not the support cards that you would need for a blade dancer deck. Uh, the support cards that you would need for a Treant deck are not the same support cards that you would need for a bard deck, right? Um, but in any case, whenever you build a deck, you need four support cards. It is far more important to upgrade all of your support cards before you upgrade, or I mean, upgrade one max DPS card and then literally just upgrade all of your support cards. Upgrade your Night Statue to 15, Scrapper to 15, Dryad to 15, Harlequin to 15, Enchant Sword to 15, uh, Banshee to 15. Um, you know, just every single support card, Summoner to 15, uh, Frost to 15. Um, upgrade all of your support cards to 15, then upgrade other DPS cards. Because if you have a if you have a large quantity of max DPS cards, but all of your support cards are the same, you're not gonna you're not gonna push any harder because um, your support cards are going to be the thing that actually pushes your damage. Um, when you the difference between having a scrapper at 14 and a scrapper at 15 means you don't get triple quota. Get, having those extra upgrades every so often is going to push your game. Um, having a night a night statue at 14 as opposed to having it at 15 and not getting the defense reduction and the extra attack uh, you're not gonna be able to uh, survive some early games when you get double night statue double scrapper like but if you do have the 15 all of a sudden your night statue can act as DPS for a short period of time until it earns you enough uh, mana to summon more things um there's like there, uh, the the way that you're supposed to use a the the way that you're supposed to use a tier list is not what is the deck that I can build right now, even though I don't have anything maxed at all, because a tier list is specifically designed so that if you had everything maxed right now at this very second, if all of your cards were maxed, these are the best cards, and. People think that if, oh, I have level 7 this, like, th is are these the decks that I should build? And this is a guide, this is a, like, a roadmap. Like, oh, maybe you could invest into these things, but you have to understand that even if I were to say, oh, yeah, Genie is the best card, invest into Genie. In 27.1, if they nerf Genie, all of a sudden, it could just drop down to being an A-tier card. Um, it probably won't drop down to a B-tier card, um, but it would probably drop down to an A-tier card. Does that mean it sucks now? Does that mean it's complete trash and garbage and, oh, I wasted my time? No, because an A-tier card is still a very good card. Um, a lot of people like to look at tier lists as S tier is the only tier and those are the only cards that I can use and everything else is trash and everything else is garbage and they're all useless, right? And a lot of people like to look at things like that. And if you don't know that a lot of people like to look at things like that, let me give you an example of that uh, because I also got that as well. Um, not putting Demon Hunter into S tier is a crime. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the world's hottest take. Um... So I said, what's a good Demon Hunter deck? Because I wasn't sure if this person was even serious or if he was actually just in on the sarcastic joke of like, oh, how come Hex is an S tier? Like Mitch the Kit would, if, you, if you've ever been into my chat, uh, Mitch the Kit, you know, likes to, because he knows that I hate Hex and I think that Hex is the worst card. Um, and so he loves to say like, Hex is better than everything, right? But he, we, we both understand that he's joking. Um, at which point right now he would tell me, I'm not joking. Hex is the best card. But like, I understand that he's joking and that he doesn't actually think that. I don't know this person. So I thought, you know, like, what's a good Demon Hunter deck? At which point they de they decided to describe their entire build of a Demon Hunter deck. And I said, so you mean this is for real and it's not a joke? Um, because in no reality is Demon Hunter an S tier card. Um, in, in zero reality is Demon Hunter at all an S tier card. Um, if you want to know what the best cards are, there is a list. 
There is a list of the best people in this game with the most trophies that have everything at max. Maybe Demon Hunter is a very good guard when you're, when you have, you know, 900 crit and you're battling against level seven other people, right? And your, your level seven Demon Hunter is just so much better than their Boreas, right? But I mean, the, the reason why we do tier lists are what are the best cards at max level? What should you theoretically invest into? But it's not even more, it's not even so much of that as it is what should you not invest into? Instead of looking at this top tier of cards, instead of looking at, oh, Bard and G uh, Bard and Genie are the best cards. I'm going to start my journey right now to maxing out a Bard and a Genie, right? Because because in 27.0, Elliot said that 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 those are the two S tier cards. So right now I have a level 7, I'm going to make them a level 15 and then I'll I will have an S tier card, right? When will you max that out? When when are you planning to max that out? Because if they nerf Genie next patch and it's not an s tier card and it becomes an a tier card and like all of a sudden trion is the best card and spirit master is the best card and blade dancer are the best cards are you going to take my advice because that exact person would be like oh you said that that card was s tier now it's terrible now it sucks now it's trash right and you have to understand that that can happen an s tier card the best of the best cards can can uh, can uh, change very, very quickly. Which was S tier for a very, very long period of time. And they functionally changed which. And all of a sudden, I don't even want to put it into the, the lettered categories anymore because it's better off as a toxic support card. It's better off in that way than it is for Gift of the Raven. Gift of the Raven is so complicated to use now um, that most people uh, are choosing to use other things. People started using Crystal Mancer. People started using Crystal Mancer support as the go-to support when they functionally changed which. In, in instead of trying to like do the work of like making a witch work in their deck, they're like, ah, Crystal Mancer is so much easier. It just levels itself up. It gives me the defense reduction. It gives me uh. 20% crit damage, like, it's just easier to use. I'm just going to use that instead of trying to jump through all the hoops that Witch is now forcing me to jump through. And, and all of a sudden, like, not a lot of pe not a lot of decks use Witch anymore. And when they changed, when they functionally changed Witch, Triant became a, a much worse card. Um, it's that, like, the, the idea that, like, if I, if you saw my tier list, if I even did a tier list, if I did a tier list last patch, Trion and Witch would have been S tier cards. And now Trion is an A tier card, which isn't bad, but it's not an S tier card. It's not like the, it's not like everybody in the top 100 are using Trion because that's what the meta was before. Like literally in 26.0, the meta was Trion Witch decks. That was, everybody was using it. There was like almost no variation. It was just everybody was using Treant, and all of a sudden they change Witch, and and they don't even change Treant. They change Witch, and that deck doesn't it doesn't work as well as it used to. And so now it's not a terrible card, but you're not going to beat a Genie deck, and you're not going to beat a Bard deck, uh, like nine times out of ten. And so like the the way that you need to look at a tier list, go from the bottom, like look at all of these cards on the bottom. If, I'm assuming if you have like a level seven account, if you if you are new to this game, if you're new to this game, the first advice that I would give to you is try out cards. Try I that's the other thing. When people ask me like what card is better, this level nine this or this level ten this, I always ask them, have you tried them? And they will usually say yes, and then I will say which one is better? And then they'll say the answer. And then I'll be like, that one, then. That one is better. Like, like people, I don't know if people want confirmation from a, from a YouTuber, like from a content creator that they need to, a content creator to affirm their thought. 
but the game is all about experimentation. This game is about looking at your cards, looking at your crit, looking at your decks, and building a deck yourself. Figuring this game out for yourself. What do you like? What do you not like? I could tell you a card that's good, but if you don't even like the card, if you don't even like how it plays, then that information of telling you that it's good doesn't even matter. I could tell, um, and, and for the longest time, when Bard was the best card, Rush, I could tell Rush Royale Tips and Tricks, hey, Bard is the best card, stop playing Genie. But he has a max Bard, and he refuses to play it because he doesn't like how it plays, and he'd rather play Genie. And it doesn't matter that Bard is a better card, because he likes playing Genie. And th part of the game is also that. It's also figuring out a card that you yourself like, a playstyle that you like. If you like the frantic nature of a, um, a free Genie deck, it, like merging things out, summoning things in, using summoner, building a board, you know, like always constantly moving and doing things, then play a Genie Afrit deck. If you like just leaving all of your cards on the field and just scrappering away, play a Bruiser deck, right? That's what a Bruiser deck is. You're not trying to merge things out. You just want to set up your field and go scrapper, eat, scrapper, eat, scrapper, eat. Scrapper, eat. And that's all you do, right? But for, to, to some other people, like, that might be a boring gameplay. But for you, maybe that's just, it's just easy. It's just easier. It's easier on your brain. So, like, when things go crazy, like, late game, it's still easy. When things go crazy late game for, like, Rush Royale Tips and Tricks when he's playing a free, he likes that. He likes the frantic nature of that gameplay. Um... The thing that I would tell you to do is look at the bottom tier and just look that and just and just assume that you should probably not invest into any of these cards. If you have a level seven build of if you if you've just started this game and you look at this tier list, look, the, the most important part of this tier list is probably going to be this bottom tier, this bottom tier. Hex, Demonologist, Stasis. Boreas, Corsair, Meteor, uh, Demon Hunter, and Inquisitor. Probably don't invest in any of those cards. As of right now, none of them are good. There is a large quantity of A-tier cards that I think are still very good. They are not S-tier as of right now, but they are still very solid decks that you can theoretically invest into. But you have to understand that even though, even if I could give you a correct answer, what is better, a level 9 Blade Dancer or a level 10 Bruiser? The correct answer is a level 9 Blade Dancer because a level 9 Blade Dancer, a Blooming Dash Blade Dancer right now with Gunslinger is insanity. It is better than a level 10 Bruiser. Even though I could give you that advice right now, the answer to your ultimate question of what deck should I build doesn't matter until you get until you commit and get something to level 15. Nothing else matters. Especially with the randomness of how you obtain cards in this game, you could get more like uh inquisitor shards than you do blade dancers. And then now all of a sudden, are you going to switch all of those Inquisitors into Blade Dancers? Like if the, your next 15 legendary pools are 15 Inquisitors, are you going to take my advice of switching to Blade Dancer? Or are you going to keep Inquisitor and just be an Inquisitor player? And you could be. That could be a thing. That could be an avenue that you take. Or you can switch it all into Blade Dancer or you can switch it all into event units like a Spirit Master or a Tesla or a Genie. And, and what if they nerf Genie? Like that, you can't feel bad that you took advice that was for right now. Right now at this second. If you had a Max Genie, you should be using it because it is the best card right now. But what if you don't like playing Genie and you like playing Blooming Dash Blade Dancer? Then play Blooming Dash Blade Dancer. 
I can't answer questions in uh, I can answer questions objectively. I can't answer questions subjectively. Objectively, an objective truth is that Genie and Bard are the best cards right now. A subjective feeling is I feel better playing Blade Dancer. It works for me. And that's how I feel. Blade, I love playing Blade Dancer. Triant might be a better card, technically, maybe, but I really like Blooming Dash Blade Dancer because I always have. And so I will, I will just play Blooming Dash Blade Dancer even though Triant might be the better card. Um, this game is all about experimentation. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. And people just want to ask the question, build me a deck. And I simply can't build you a deck. You could tell me literally all of your cards, but ultimately, even if I told you an, a, a deck that you could build, because I, I go into this, you know, this question with a lot of people, because again, like I said, I've gotten this question multiple times. People, I will say like, you know, I don't know any of your cards and they will then list me all of their cards and they will list me all of their talents and they will list me all of their heroes and all of the levels and all of their, you know, all of everything, right? They will, ju they will just write me a paragraph of just every single thing that is in their account. And I will basically look at them and be like, this is the best deck. This is what I would build. But now I need to teach you how to play that deck because you don't know and you don't know why I picked these cards. And it's all experimentation. It's about trying different things. It's about taking this as a template, taking a tier list as a template, looking at your own cards, seeing what's high on this list, trying that deck out and, and seeing if you like it and if it pushes far consistently. If you're consistently getting far, because that's another thing. You could build a deck that sometimes it does five minutes in death waves, but most of the times you're dying at round seven. Or you can pick a deck that gets you consistently to four minutes and 30 seconds. Which deck is better? And if you answered the seven minute deck, you're wrong. Because if you can't do that consistently, and you're usually dying before death waves, that's not a good deck. If you can consistently get to 4 minutes and 30 seconds, that's a better deck. Because then all, you've, all you need to do is fine tune and figure out ways to push harder. Because your baseline is there, and then you can push the deck further by upgrading your cards and your crit and your strategy. Whenever I post a tier list, everybody always inevitably asks, I have these cards, but they're lower level. Build me a deck. What are the best cards? Build me a deck. And I simply can't. Because then I'd have to make a separate tier list of everything at level 9. And then I'd have to make a separate tier list of everything at level 10. And then another separate tier list for everything at level 11. And then another other separate tier list for everything at 12. And then another, another separate tier list for everything at 13. And then another separate tier list for everything at 9, but I don't have uh, a level 5 mermaid. And then another separate tier list for everything at 9, but I do have this at level 10 and, and this at level 11. And my crit is 1,000, and um, but I don't have a gadget. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't want to be disingenuous um, when people ask me what's the best card because I don't think that's a helpful question. And it's such a vague question, even though people think it's a specific question. A question can be short and impossible in a comment section. If somebody wrote, how do you play this game? Think about how you would answer that. How would you answer that? It's a short question. It's an easy question. You understand that question, right? How do you play this game? 
How, what's the best way to play this game? There's an easy question. What's the best way to play this game? And it's short. How do you answer that? You could give an answer to that. You could be like, oh, well, you just, you press the summon in button and, you know, like you merge cards and then, and then they turn into other cards and then you, you defeat things and then it sends it to your opponent and then, and then you win. That's how you play. And at its base level, maybe that's an answer. And they're like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then they go all along with their day. But as a content creator and as the kind of person that I am, I like explaining things. I like going into detail about things. And the truthful answer to, like, how do you use a tier list? A tier list is specifically designed to show you what is the best right now. If you had all of these cards at max, what would be the best thing to do right now? Because if you don't have any of these cards at max, a tier list is literally just supposed to make you understand what you shouldn't invest into and what you maybe should invest into. And you have to accept that that maybe is a very, very strong maybe because literally Everything can change in 27.1. All of a sudden, Corsair uh, gets talents and, you know, like becomes an S tier card. All of a sudden, they rework Boreas and it becomes an, an S plus tier card and everybody is running it. All of a sudden, they nerf uh, Genie and then nobody plays it anymore and it's, a, it's an F tier card. Everything can change. And so trying to give somebody advice who doesn't even who doesn't even have any of these cards at max to say oh here's your roadmap to like oh this is what you should invest into it's kind of impossible because by the time you have something at level 15 the entire meta will have changed and my advice to you will be for not and then you'll probably blame me for giving you bad advice. Prior to 26, uh, to, prior to 27.0, I would have told everybody, invest into Witch. S plus tier card. Every deck is using Witch. Every deck. Every deck is using Witch. And then 27.0 happens and nobody uses Witch anymore. I just, I just maxed out my Witch. Nobody uses Witch anymore. I, I think Bruiser decks use Witch. And that's it. Maybe Tesla decks. Nobody uses Witch anymore. Toxic decks. That's why, that's why it's in Toxic. That's why I specifically put it into Toxic. Toxic decks use Witch. Everything can change. Instantly. And if you don't understand how to look at a card... And, and build a deck and figure out if it's good for you, for your crit, for your card levels, for everything. If you don't understand how to like test out decks, play decks, try things out, lose. If you are not okay with losing by trying things out, this isn't the game for you. Because a lot of this game is that. It's trying something out and seeing if you like it, seeing if it works, seeing if it pushes harder. I have tried a Blooming Dash Blade Dancer with Sharpen Spear. I have tried it with Covenant of Veteran. I have tried it with Enchant Sword. I have tried it with Gadget. I've tried it with Mari. I've tried it with Snowflake. I've tried it with Chemist. I've tried it with Trapper. I've tried it with Crystal Mancer. I have tried everything. <laughs> I have tried so many different kinds of combinations with Blooming Dash Blade Dancer. I posted my favorite one, but before I did that, I tried a large quantity of things until I got to that. And I'm somebody who likes this game. I'm, I'm somebody who likes Blooming Dash Blade Dancer. And so I, I, I tried all of those different kinds of support cards. And that's what you have to do. And you have to try all of the different kinds of heroes to see which one works for you. 
what's good at your level? What's good that you have? Like, what do you like using? And that's what the game is. You cannot wait for a content creator to tell you how to build the deck. You have to figure it out. You can ask the question, why is, why do you think that Tesla is better than Blade Dancer? Why do you think that Spirit Master is better than Treon? You can ask specific questions, but questions like, build me a deck. I have all these cards at seven, build me a deck. The more vague the question, the more impossible it is for me to answer it. Because deck building is on you.